On one of my previous videos, I received a comment asking me to talk about the different versions of the Digimon Virtual Pets and what the different rosters they had were. So I decided to take that concept and use it as an opportunity to help people decide which Digimon Virtual Pet is right for them based on what they can all do. So for the purposes of this video, I'm not going to be talking about Digivices like this. This is the Digimon Adventure Digivice right here. They've made a few of these in recent years based on the original toys they had, but updating them with new features. So this is the version 15 series Digivice. And while these are very cool and are probably very nostalgic if you're familiar with the shows, they are not Digimon Virtual Pets and they're also very, very expensive. So they're hard to recommend as a starting device because I don't know how much they released that, but these days on eBay and other secondhand sellers, they go for well over $100 uh, new, so may not be the best one to start with, but if you really like those shows, these are solid devices to get. But we're not going to be talking about those. We're also not going to be talking about older devices like the Digimon Excel. Uh, they're very cool devices. I really like them. Uh, they have a lot of great things to offer, but overall, they are not as easy to find as modern devices, and it's there's so many different types that it's impossible to say, oh, well, this one's better than that. There are way too many differences to go over and it would be very confusing for a new fan to pick just one of these. So instead, we're going to be focusing on the modern releases, those Digimon pets that were released in 2017 and later. And that all starts off here with the Digital Monster version 20th. So that's this device right here. As you can see, it's already pooped for the video, so that's nice. Let's uh, fix that. There we go. And let's get some more exposure up in here. There we go. So. Um, this device is one that was released as a compilation of previous Digital Monsters. So it features a lot of different Digimon on it. There's over 100 to get on each specific device. Let's go ahead and clean that poop while we're talking about this. And the whole deal with it is that the Digital Monsters version 1 through 5 are all here. You can raise whichever ones you like. As you can see, I've got a version 1 on the left and a version 2 on the right. And there's also a few new eggs that were introduced as well. The original rosters are all there and they've been expanded. So now Digimon can go not only from adult to perfect, but from perfect to ultimate. So Kabuterimon, for example, can turn into Skull Greymon like he always could. And Skull Greymon can now turn into Skull Mamon, which is new for this version. Now the device is entirely in Japanese, but the Japanese is easy to memorize. You don't have to read it. You just have to know what it means. So. For example, the top one means meat, the bottom one means protein. I don't know, actually know if that's what it says, but that gives it a meat, so there we go, it means meat to me. Um, so it's very easy to use this, even if you don't know Japanese, it's a solid device to do. Now, another update you'll see is that you can raise two Digimon at once, you weren't able to do that on any Digimon device prior to this, so that's a cool new feature they've added in, is that they get raised side by side. and. There's uh, battles on the device itself, so you don't need to worry about connecting to someone else in order to reach a higher evolution stage. You can do battles directly on the device. So this is a really good device, but I will say it's hard for me to recommend this because they just released an English version of the same device right here. As you can see, this one's pooped as well. Let's clean that up past it. Um, so this is the exact same device. These two um, are identical in pretty much every way except for what the exclusive eggs are, which I'll get to that in a second. But biggest differences are this one's entirely in English so I can go anywhere and see English words so that's cool again the language barrier isn't a big problem but there you go it is all in English and the other big thing is that this is much much cheaper um, I live in the in the United States these retail for $20 at GameStop and Amazon um, in Australia and Canada they're selling these for not too much more I think it's $30 Canadian I don't know how much Australian but they sell them at EB, EB Games at both those um, territories. So there you go. So it's much cheaper than getting one of these, which these started off uh, around close to $50. But are, you can find them uh, new and used now sometimes for, well, I don't even know if I would say less ever. I, 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 these are usually pretty expensive. Um, they go for over $50, especially for the Wave 2 devices. And they're harder to come by than just this, I would say. So if you're able to get this one. Um, if you don't live in the United States or Canada or Australia, you may be able to still import it using Amazon or something similar. I don't know the logistics behind all that. I don't import from 
America to Europe, so I don't know what the uh, logistics are. But it will likely be cheaper to get one of these than one of these. Now, there are four colors of this, but there are only two versions. Uh, navy blue and brown are the same version, while gray and yellow are the same version. Now, over here, there was only, for those same versions, only gray and brown were released, but there was there was a Wave 2 release, which includes Zubamon, Omegamon, and Alphamon themed devices. And the differences between the different versions, of which there are a total of five, is that each one has a different exclusive egg. Now, I do not think that this exclusive egg is enough to warrant paying a bunch more money for a Wave 2 device from Japan when you can get this for 20 bucks. Because the exclusive eggs are just straight lines, it's just six different Digimon, well, four to six. Some of them don't have uh, exclusive um, baby forms on them, but the Wave 2 devices in Japan have Coronamon, Mekumon, and Lunamon as exclusives. So if you really like one of those Digimon, go for it. Um, the American versions do have Taichi's Agumon and Yamato's Gabumon as exclusives, depending on which one you buy. Um, gray, is, gray, or gray and yellow are Gabumon, where yeah, or navy and brown are Agumon. But both Agumon and Gabumon are available in separate eggs on this device. They just don't follow the evolution path from the show. So if you really like the show, maybe that's enough. But regardless, you still have over 100 Digimon on each device that are mostly identical. So I wouldn't be too worried about which version you buy. Just go with your favorite color unless you really have one of those Digimon as your favorites. So that's this. And as a note on the exclusive eggs, they are hard to unlock. You have to connect to five unique devices, which unique either means that they have a different tamer name if you're connecting to another Digital Monster version 20th, or if you're sending a Copymon to a Pendulum version 20th, then it just has to be a different version of the Pendulum. So there you go, that's this device. Um, if you're looking for the cheapest possible device to get into Digimon, this is the one to go with. Absolutely no questions asked. Otherwise, I do like the other devices more um, than this device, but this is by no means a ba uh, bad device and is again the cheapest one you can possibly get in a good way next up we have the pendulum version 20th now this was released only in japan there is no american release of this or any other device i'm talking about today um even though you'll see this is in english this is a modded device just as a heads up so this isn't 100 percent going to be exactly like yours in a couple ways and i'll explain those differences but overall there are uh four versions of the digimon pendulum version 20th and the first two versions released, Silver Black and Silver Blue, each have over 120 Digimon to raise, which is even more impressive when you consider that most of those Digimon are exclusive to each device. Now, that is both a pro and a con. That means in the Pendulum series, there are 240 different Digimon to raise, but in order to raise all 240 of those Digimon, you will need to get different devices. The Silver Black and Beelzebubmon versions, they have Digimon that are bugs and dinosaurs and villains and metal thingies so that's what you would get if you get that mostly those types of digimon whereas the dukemon and silver blue versions have aquatic creatures plants birds and protagonists mostly so um, that's most of the kinds of digimon you'll find on there now again mine is modded so you'll see i have ocean and bug on one device if you do mod these you can get all 240 digimon on one device it's not easy I don't recommend doing it if you're not familiar with this type of thing. These devices are expensive and you don't want to break them by modding them, but um, I did mod mine because I like having all the stuff together. I like oceanic creatures, I like bugs the best, so that's why I have them together. So keep that in mind that if you aren't modding, then you will have mostly different Digimon between each versions, meaning you may want to get two of these if you choose. I'd recommend getting a Wave 1 and a Wave 2, so if you get Silver Black, get the Dukemon device to go with it, or if you get Silver Blue, get the Beelzebubmon device to go with it. Overall, I also consider the uh, Wave 2 devices to be a little bit superior because they do have more Digimon on them, but overall each one is a very good device, a lot of good things on them. Um, the exclusive for Silver Black is Terriermon, whereas the exclusive for Silver Blue is Lotmon, and the exclusive for Dukemon is Dracomon, who is a uh, branching path egg, which is very nice, and the exclusive for Beelzebubmon is Zubamon, which again is a branching path egg and very nice. I like branching path eggs the most. So those are the differences between the versions. Um, you can unlock something by connecting a Wave 1 and a Wave 2 together, which is why I recommend getting one of each, but you can still have a great time with just one device. They are able to jog rest, meaning if Gomamon evolved to Ikakumon and Tentomon evolved into Kuagamon, I could jog rest them together and I would get Animalicarimon, uh, for example. 
which is really cool. So unlike the original where each adult form only has one perfect evolution that it can reach, these devices, while they do only have one natural perfect, they can draw us into other perfect forms. So if you want to raise the most number of Digimon possible, I'd recommend the Digimon Pendulum. The main reason you would want to avoid it is, if you weren't into this, is that you do have to shake in order to do things. So if I'm training, then I hold the device like this, it says count, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There you go. Um, and then they will attack. That's how you uh, power up your Digimon is by shaking. Now, I don't consider that a con personally, but some people will. Some people won't want to have to shake their devices. So just keep that in mind that if you feel like that's a problem for you, that you may want, not want to get this. But if that's not a problem for you, then and you want to raise a lot of Digimon, I would absolutely recommend this one. It's a lot of fun. It's my personal favorite. So we're going to put that one down over here. And we're next going to talk about the Digital Monster X. So the Digital Monster X is the current most recent device released in Japan. And when it first came out, we were a little bit hesitant about it because it has a much smaller roster than the other devices. Whereas we have about 110 on this, over 120 on this. This one only has 30 Digimon you can raise on each device. In total, there are 45 different Digimon between black and white. Um, some Digimon do repeat on each one, so for example, Metal Tyrannomon is on both devices, um, but there's only 30 that you can raise on each one. Now, that does sound like a small number, but the cool thing about this is, first of all, the evolutions are much more varied in how they can happen and what you can achieve. So, I may have Metal Tyrannomon right now. If I was on a uh, another device, if I was on the version 20th devices, Metal Tyrannomon would only have one thing he can become, whereas on this device, he can turn into three or four different things depending on how you raise them. So you're never truly locked into an evolution, but it's also not just a free-for-all like on the Pendulum Progress either. It's a good middle ground where each stage gives you solid options to choose between for evolution depending on how you raise it. Um, it also has a quest mode, which you can see here. It lets you choose an area to go in and fight battles with, and the quest mode is really cool for a lot of reasons. One, it's just a fun thing to do. Two you unlock evolutions from it. So for example, Metal Tyrannomon cannot be evolved into until you beat Area 14 in quest mode, which is, I really like that, I love that. And the roster starts off very small uh, for what you can raise, but as you unlock more in quest mode, then you unlock more of the roster, which is awesome. I really like that. Um, the quest mode goes in hand in hand with this. You can level up your Digimon right now. Metal Tyrannomon is level one, but if I beat a Digimon in quest mode, I gain experience and I'll level up. Leveling up does affect what you evolve into and it also affects how strong you are, which is really cool. The other Digimon don't really have a system like that. The closest would have been the Pendulum Progress has somewhat of a system like that, but this one's a little bit more uh, nuanced in what you and how direct you can control it and what it involves. So it's like you have a little RPG in your pocket, which is really nice. So overall you spend a lot more time with your Digimon on this, so whereas it doesn't have as many Digimon to raise, you do spend more time with each Digimon and you do more things with it. So if you want a device that has more involved um, things to do, this is the one to go with for sure. Well, I would say that except the X2 is coming out soon. Now I don't have an X2 because again I just said it's coming out soon, but it is a continuation of the X line, just like this. It looks just like this, but they come in translucent red and translucent purple, which is already really ahead of uh, this device here. This is, you know, this doesn't look bad. It's nice black and red, but we love our translucent devices. I mean, just look at this. That looks nice. It looks cool. I like it. So that's uh, the first big plus about the Digital Monster X2. There are bigger rosters. Instead of 30 on each device, there are 44 Digimon on each device that you can raise, and there are a total of 60 Digimon between both devices, um, which just already makes it better. And biggest thing of all, the one version has uh, the Seedramon line on it, and the other one has the Quagmon line. They're X lines, I should say. So that's a big deal to me because, again, I like aquatic creatures and I like bugs. So um, the selections on this one aren't bad. There's some good things on there. Like I like Metal Tyrannomon a lot. I like the black overall more for Digital Monster X1. For X2, I like them both pretty well. I think there's a lot of good stuff on it. It is mostly evil Digimon, which I'm not big on that, but again, they got a bug and a sea creature, so I'm good there. So I would recommend, if you only want to get one device and you like the features of the X, don't get the X. Get the X2. It's going to be better overall. It's going to be cooler. You can pre-order it right now at Premium Bandai. Uh, there's a few other options you can go to to get pre-orders for it too. I'm not going to get into those 
on this because well it's not I, I don't want to waste everyone's time with that if you are interested and you want help looking into it let me know I'll help you out personally but um, the pre-orders close on August 20th in Japan time I believe so you get them in by August 19th if you're in uh, the other hemisphere so uh, they are once they close uh, they, you won't be able to get them directly from Bandai anymore you will have to go through a reseller and they aren't shipping until December if you got them in early enough, which if you're watching this video, you didn't get them in early enough, then you will get them in November. So hopefully mine will be actually be arriving in November. I did order mine very early. So that's a few months away. So if you do want an X device and you do want it now, you can get one of these and get them pretty quick. And they are still good. There's a lot of good things about this. Um, as a note, in order to get every possible Digimon on here, you will need two devices, unfortunately. Um, black and white connect together, and that's how you unlock the evolution for Dukemon. And it's already been confirmed that something similar will exist on the X2 as well. Connecting red and purple together will unlock a special area, which probably means another evolution as well. And connecting a X2 with a regular X will also unlock something. So just as a heads up there, they really want you to own all four Xs <laughs> to get everything. So that does pretty much cover it. Those are the modern releases of the Digimon Virtual Pets. As for which one is right for you, just as your review, I would recommend the Digital Monster version 20th English version if you want the cheapest device. Most bang for your buck for sure. If you want to raise the most Digimon, I'd recommend a Pendulum version 20th because there are a lot of Digimon to raise. Or if you want the device with the most raising features, I'd go with the Digital Monster X or rather the Digital Monster X2 unless you don't want to wait or unless you do want to own both. So there you go. Hopefully this was of some help for some people. Uh, I like all these devices, so I'm just going to keep buying all of them because that's just how I am. But I think Digimon Pets are a great time. I think you'll really enjoy them if you uh, do like that sort of thing. So give them a shot. If you've ever tried a Tamagotchi or a Gigapet or anything, try giving a Digimon Virtual Pets a shot. And yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. Go to my website and you can see the full rosters for each of these devices that I've talked about today. That's digitamahatchery.com. And again, if you do want to know anything, leave a comment, send me a tweet on Twitter. I'll get back to you. I always do. And yeah, I hope you have fun raising your Digimon. Bye.